Hello, my fellow colleagues, bilingual teachers, educators, those of us preparing or planning on taking the TKT CLEO test, which is a Cambridge test for those of us who teach bilingual classes or teach in bilingual schools. So if you want to know what the test that we're preparing for looks like, here's a picture of it on the screen, and you can find a link in the comment section to download the test and try to answer it yourself or follow by using a printout or a electronic copy, an electronic copy if you prefer. Okay, so this is practice number eight, meaning that there are seven practices before that one. So if you haven't seen the other ones, please I highly recommend that you start from scratch, unless you know the test really well and you want to target a specific question. Why do we call this practice eight? Because the test is actually divided into chunks, right? Different chunks. And task eight is the fourth chunk of the second section of the test. So that's basically the way it is. So you have three parts. Uh, part one has four tasks. Part two has four tasks. So task eight is the last task of the second part, the second section. You don't need to understand this, it's just for organizational purposes. And it contains six questions. Let's move on and see what the question looks like. For questions 45 to 50, match the science activities with the examples of activity types listed A through G. Again, another question directly focusing on acti activity types. This is even more focused. So we have questions 45 to 50. Those are the questions here that make up the task. And the activity types are classifying, matching, ordering, odd one out, labeling, information transfer, and word completion. So let's explore the question a little bit before we get to solve it. First of all, let's try to understand the area of teaching knowledge that this task is focusing on. Well, we know the second section of the test focuses on lesson preparation. And those are the areas of teaching knowledge um, described in the bullet points there. Of course, this is very direct. This is about activity types and their purposes. The previous question, number seven, sort of like mixed material selection and adaptation with types and purposes. But here, we are really focusing on what types of activities we are using. If you want to learn more about activity types, um, the table that you see on the left was taken from Kay Bentley's book, the TKT course CLIO module, which is a book that I highly recommend for those of you preparing for the TKT CLIO test. I'm not getting any money for recommending this book. I just recommend it because it is really a good book and one of the uh, few books out there that covers the content of the test extensively. So what activity types do we have here in the question? Classifying, matching, ordering, etc. We've read them. But notice that if you, if you look at the middle column, in K Bentley's table, you do have more types of activities that are not in this test, but they may appear in other tests. So it's important to know the different types of activities that we have. So you, students could do a web search, they could, they could rank information. So there's all these other types of activities that you can see here in the table that you don't see in the test. And this table is good, and I highly suggest that you take a look at it later in more detail. You can pause the video if you wish to, because not only does the, the author provide an example of each one, but also connects them to a subject um, under which they could appear. It doesn't mean that web searches are only possible when the students are learning about the environment. Uh, it can also be used for a geography or a history or a math lesson or any of these lessons. But she's just providing examples of uh, different courses that can include different activities and an example of how that activity would show up in that course. So I highly recommend. But before uh, we get to the answers, let's understand one thing here. So our task is to match examples, 45 to 50, to the types of activity. So let's focus on the cognitive skills needed for each activity, right? So for example, uh, classifying, what does it demand? And also question 45, what are students being asked to do? So by combining those two elements, by focusing on the cognitive skills needed for each activity, we'll be able to match them, right? So let's get to the question. So first of all, classifying information, we know, right? You have uh, 
different words and you have a table, you have to put the word inside the box, the corresponding box in the table. Matching, that's exactly what we're doing here in this exercise. We're matching numbers to letters. Ordering is to put things in a sequence. Odd one out is to eliminate the one that doesn't fit the group. Labeling is to put names to things. Information transfer involves getting something from a medium and putting it in another medium. So read something and then record it, or listen to something and then write it. So you are transferring information from one medium to the other. Word completion, you have a sentence, there's a blank, and you have to put in a word that's missing. Or sometimes you have a letter of the word and you have to complete the rest of the word, etc. All right, so let's look at question number 45. 45 is asking students to read the task and then add the keywords to the diagram of the year. So there's a drawing of an year and there's a diagram. So students are going to add the keywords from the task, I'm sorry, from the text to the diagram of the year. Well, this is an example, a clear example of labeling. Students are going to be labeling um, a diagram. So 45, that's going to be letter E. Let's get to 46 now. Look at the description again. Number the stages as they occur in the design process. There is a process, there is a sequence, there is an order. So, number 46, students are going to be ordering information. Okay, uh, pay attention to the keywords in the question. Look at it again. Number the stages as they occur in the design process. So, as they occur, in the order that they occur. That's, that's the key here. That's a cognitive skill. Number 47, there are three stages of matter. Again, stages, but it's not asking them to order them. It's already telling them that there are three stages. And then S, blank, 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 L, blank, 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 and G, blank, blank, blank. So students are going to be supplying the rest of the word. They're going to be completing the word. Word completion, letter G. Again, I hope you've been able to see how straightforward this question is. Look at what students are being asked to do and ask yourself, if I was a student, what would I do here? What would I be doing to answer this question? Number 48, put the materials into the correct column. So we have a column for animal, a column for mineral, and a column for plant. So which materials go to the animal column, to the mineral column, to the plant column? So, students are being asked to classify materials, right? They're being given a list of materials or pictures of materials or a bunch of materials, concrete materials, and they have to classify them. So, number 48, A. Number 49, listen to the recording about planets and complete the table in your course book. Again, audio to text to writing. So students are transferring information from one medium to the other. Number 49, sorry, that's uh, information transfer. Number 50, draw a line from the adjectives to the definitions. Well, again, this is exactly what we're doing here. There are numbers on one side, letters on the other. The students will be matching them. So that's a matching type of activity. So we don't have odd one out. None of the activities is asking the students to identify which one does not belong in the group. So odd one out, letter D was not used. And I hope that this quick answering of the question has allowed you to see how to go about answering this question in a clear test when you decide to take it. Again, the resources that we recommend the book by Kay Bentley's book, which we're not getting paid to advertise here. It's just a good book that I really recommend if you're serious, serious about taking the TKT Clear Test. And the handbook for teachers, the one on the right, which you can download for free um, in the Cambridge website. And there's a link to this booklet and to the answer key in the comment section. And while you're there downloading those materials and getting those links, make sure to subscribe to the channel to like this video if you've enjoyed it, to help us out. And uh, don't forget to check out the two other videos that we recommend at the end of this one and see you in the next one.